Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everybody, Diane here, welcome to my studio. Today I'm going to be painting a little um, tropical greenhouse scene, something a bit like this. I'm just going to let you glimpse it here from behind the, the box of paints that I'm going to use. So it'll be something like that. I'm not quite sure how it's going to turn out yet, whether or not I'm going to do the uh, metalwork in black or in white or, or how we're going to do that. But it's going to be a little greenhouse filled with tropical plants. Now, of course, most tropical plants are on the green side. And um, so I'm going to be using my uh, Kiritake set for this. But of course, that's not necessary because you can mix loads of greens from your set of paints. So as long as you've got phthalo uh, blue um, and possibly Windsor green, you know, um, lemon yellow, cadmium yellow, all the basics, you can mix hundreds and hundreds of different colors. Um, the reason why I choose to use this quite often is two reasons really. One, it makes it easier for me to give a variety of colors on screen so that you can see what I'm doing. And you don't have to use the same paints, but you might want to use the same colors and you can mix them yourself. And also because these colors look very good on camera. So they show up better than the traditional Winsor & Newton type of colors or Daniel Smith or whatever. Anyway, these are the colors that are available in this set if you happen to have the Kuretake set but you can just as easily mix them. This is starting from here. This is what they call malachite green. And then it just goes through these bluish greens here, which are these ones, which are very good for tropical plants. The ones on the blue side are, you know, most tropical plants have got a tint, tint of blue in them. Uh, but then here we've got the brighter greens. So it's these ones here. So I've got them that way around. So this one is that one, and then that one, that's kind of sap green, emerald green, light green, or whatever. I can't remember what they call them all. But so those are your yellowish ones. Now you're probably going to want some of both of those shades, the greenish blues and the greenish yellows, or the yellowish greens and the bluish greens. You're going to want some of both of those in this little drawing painting. So I'll just move that out of the way there for a sec. And um, so here, I was trying out, this is just to give you an example, phthalo blue and yellow ochre will give you these colours. This is phthalo blue and yellow ochre. This is phthalo blue and lemon yellow. So look, already eight different colours from two uh, starting points. Three, sorry. Um, yeah, anyway, so you know how to mix colours. If you don't, I'm sure um, you'll have fun learning. Uh, next thing, brushes. A little while ago, Meaden um, sent me some samples of loads of different stuff that they sell. And this is one of the things that they sent. And I haven't, up until now, talked about this. Um, I must admit, when I opened it, I was a little bit hesitant because um, there are 10 brushes in here and it's very inexpensive. If you go to our website, you'll find it's there. Um, you get your extra 10% off any time you order through one of our links. Uh, very inexpensive and really actually not at all bad. Um, I looked and I thought, oh, I don't know if I like white handles. I don't know if I like this colorway. I, I don't know. I don't know what I think about that. It looks a bit cheap, you know, and it is inexpensive. But um, not being one to, um, what's the word, uh, look a gift horse in the mouth, I thought, well, I'll try this. I'll try them with an open mind. So... Um, I did, and I, I tried out one of the um, things that you need a fine point for, which is doing this kind of leaf. And I was very pleased to see how nicely it painted these leaves. So um, I did that and, and that, you know, this is just very, very good at that. And then also um, there is a whole selection here. There are lots of different sizes of rounds and there are three flats 
and one fan brush. And these are detail brushes. These are very tiny for those of us who like to paint something small. Um, I, I don't think I would probably use them often, but maybe from time to time for eyes or something like that on a on a bird. This one, um, this half, I think so. Is this a one inch or a half inch? Um, it should say there somewhere, shouldn't it? I don't know. Um, I could measure it as a thing. Uh, three quarters, perhaps. Five eighths. Hmm. Okay, so just over half an inch. And that's nice for doing things like cottages. I'm just trying to think where I put it, but I was doing a little practice. Where was it? Where was it? Oh, here it is. Um, this is what I was trying out with the flat brush. And I'll show you, I'll do, I'll do a video on this at some point, doing the um, fence posts like this and doing the trees like this, and then doing the roof, and all of these nice little windows. I did the whole painting with a flat brush, this one here. It's just a little sketch, but um, yeah. So why am I rambling on about this? Because I wanted to show you this set. I'm going to use this brush today, probably, to give it a road test, and um, just thought I, I owed it to Meaden to show you that. And then, oh yeah, and one lady did say uh, she's got a birthday coming up and have I got any suggestions for things that she might like to purchase? Um, I have just received this little box of pens from Sheila, who sent them to me from England. I know you can get them in America too. These are white marker pens and they're really good. Um, I managed to activate one of them yesterday and... So I'll show you uh, how that works. They're very, very good. And she's been using them for a while and she says that they are better than many others. And I would be inclined to agree. That's pretty good, isn't it? So um, if you are looking for white pens, you could do worse than this. The Artistro Extra Fine Tip, 0.7 millimeter water-based ink, shake, press and draw choking hazard. Do not swallow this pen. She also, Sheila, sent me this one, which is a Posca pen. This is also 0.7 millimeter, but I think this does smaller, thinner lines. Yes, that's right. It does somewhat, oh, I wanted to show you this. Tamsin pointed this out on this one. If you go uh, hold it to the side, you can get a broad line. Look at that, look at that. I never thought to do that before. You can get different thicknesses of lines like that. So for mark making, wow, it's really exciting. Uh, the Posca, uh, oh, that one also writes on plastic and other materials of a similar ilk. So if you've got a shiny cover like that, um, you can write your name on it and it will stay. So there we are. Um, go around writing your name on everything. Write your name all over your car. Um, here are some feathers that I did as practices before. We can add some lines. Yeah, these are nice. So thank you, Sheila, very much for these. They are going to be wonderful. I'm really looking forward to using them for lots of things. Okay. Um, now, what was I going to do today? Oh yes, the greenhouse. Right, I shall clear my space and I'll be back in two shakes of a lamb's tail. So the first thing I need to do is to create the background wash for the greenhouse. We're not going to paint the plants onto a white background. We're going to put in a light green color. Um, so first of all, I've, I've picked up a piece of card here. This is a, an old uh, card that I uh, 
painted on a while ago and um, it's just easier to position the whole thing on the paper rather than drawing lines with a ruler I find so I'm just going to lightly draw around that to give me a guide. Um, any size or shape doesn't really matter what you do and um, I'm going to um, use a probably going to have a kind of um, peaked shape for the roof but um, we'll, we'll take the wash in not right up to the top so and I'm going to use a large brush large round this is a size 12 Princeton Aqua Elite and this is olive green this color um, so we'll use that to just drop in a wash and I'm going to, what I'm going to do is start upside down. So I've turned the piece of paper. This is a piece of Canson XL uh, mixed media paper, um, which I've taken out of a sketchbook, actually, because it's easier to paint. And I'm just going to drop this wash in, doing a graduated wash, getting a little bit lighter as we go down, using a little bit more water. And it doesn't have to be even. It can be um, blotchy and, uh, you know, patchy because it, it's going to be all covered up with your plants. And as we get towards the top, we just add a little bit more water and just let that kind of dwindle away like that. And we turn it round. And uh, so that's basically the shape of the greenhouse. It doesn't have to be... Um, absolutely square down the sides because <clears throat> this is a watercolour painting. Um, so then the next thing we have to do is basically let that dry. Almost. Once it's a little bit drier we can drop in some shadowy greens for the background of the plants. So the question is how long do we wait before we do that? We're going to wait until the shine goes off of the paper. And if you kind of look at it sideways on, you'll see that the paper is shiny where you've put the water. Um, so in the meantime, we'll mix up a couple of other colours. Or um, if we're using the Kuretake set, we don't need to mix them, but we can just fetch them. Uh, and so for the ones in the background, we probably want them to be a bit on the bluer side. So these are the bluer greens. These are the yellowy greens. Oops, sorry, you need to be able to see that. These are the bluey greens and these are the yellowy greens. So I'm going to select a couple of these. These are the bluey greens. I'll just pop them here so that I don't get muddled up. It doesn't really matter which ones I use, but just so that I know. And so we've got this color. This colour, that's very blue, isn't it? This colour and this colour. So that's getting a little bit more green, that one. <clears throat> so I think probably I'll use that one there, which is forest green. That's quite a dark green, I must admit. I do remember noticing that that was quite a dark green. Um, so for the background, well, we'll just drop in a couple of blobs of green. Maybe I'll mix a little bit of olive with a little bit of that. Yeah, so that's probably where we want to be. So I'm just, I think the shine has begun to, to go away. So we'll just put in a few sort of shadowy, leafy things in the background. These are going to blend in and just sort of smush themselves around. Hello, who are you? Which pushy cat's come in now? Oh, that's Frankie. Okay, so we'll just let that dry completely while I go and feed the cat. So I've waited for that to dry and I just had an idea. I thought to myself, okay, for the next step, what I'm going to do is I seem to have some tropical washi tape here. So I'm just going to put some of that around the outside edge just so that I uh, don't go over the edge too much at the beginning. Although I will be wanting to do that 
uh, in a second. But just for the very next step, I'm just going to blank that off a little bit. And um, you could keep it all inside if you wanted to. I was thinking that we would break outside of the structure um, ultimately. But for the next and first part, I'm just going to pick up some quite dark green. This is olive green mixed with forest green. And um, so let's let's put in some, some nice big shapes up here. And uh, you don't need to worry too much about what they look like or how dark they are. Um, just vary them, basically. Make them, you know, varied. Actually, I'm just going to lift that a bit because I do want that one to go over the edge. Take that away. And uh, have that coming outside. This is quite nice paper to paint on. Um, let's put one up here with a different shape of leaf. And I honestly think it's a good idea just to keep mixing and matching the colours as you go along. As I think I've said before in a video, um, who was it? It was, I don't remember who it was, but some famous artist said, don't paint with the same colour twice. And um, there's something to be said for that. So change your, change what's on your brush every couple of strokes. That was what he implied. There's something to be said for that, yes. And don't be afraid to go behind um, and just kind of build it up as you go along. Uh, I think this was probably a mistake to put the washi tape on, on the sides, because I do want to go over the sides, but I think I'll keep it on the bottom and the top for now. And then probably take it off the top as well. I just wanted to use the washi tape. You can have whatever um, colour scheme floats your boat, so to speak. Some people like to paint in um, sort of aqua green, greeny blue colours and so on and so forth. So whatever you like, you know. Um, let's put a nice fat kind of stem coming up the back here. And... I'm not very good at painting cheese plants. Don't know why. But anyway, whatever. It doesn't matter, does it? We'll pretend it's something else. Uh, maybe it's better if you start at the top and come down like that. Perhaps that, yeah, that's better. It was literally so cold today, I was really seriously thinking about putting gloves on. Can you believe that? It's August and I was thinking about wearing a pair of gloves. I was thinking, I think I might need to get some gloves because I don't know whether you have the same problem as me, but sometimes my fingers go a bit white because the circulation is um, not perfect. Um, so I get this white finger thing going on and I thought that was going to happen this morning because it was so cold. So I'm just going to drop in some spiky things in the background. And up here, 
we're going to have um, something hanging. Let's have a hanging plant. Um, we'll draw in the details later. And let's have some more spiky ones over here. This painting was inspired by a Procreate tutorial, which I watched on YouTube. And the chap who did it said, um, it's for people who want to sell their creations on um, Etsy. And he was encouraging people to copy his design and sell it uh, and, and offer them for sale on Etsy. So I know he wouldn't mind me um, using his instructions as inspiration. Obviously, I'm not doing this on Procreate, and I've never done anything on Procreate, but it's quite funny, really, because he's um, trying to reproduce what we do in watercolour um, using digital technology. It's, it is interesting. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is to put um, the, the footings or the, the, the front of the um, the greenhouse. So I'm trying to find a nice sort of greeny beige color, not too green. No, not that color. And then once that's dry, we'll put some sort of stone effect in there. And um, our potted plant, oh yes, that's right. And the next thing is to do some pots, which we're going to do in contrasting color. Um, so these plants are standing, not coming out of the ground, but they're actually in, in some kind of pot. Like that. And let's make a dark blue one. Um, maybe here. Just paint over the leaves because that's the thing with um, the Kuretake, you can. It will cover up what's underneath. This one will be brown. Let's put a brown one here. And choose quite dark colors because then we can um, just embellish them. I add red to that, I should get a... a good dark red, purple. Uh, I think I might go over here, go over that, and then I'll put that back in afterwards. And then I want to paint it in the basket up here. And I will draw in the hanging bit. And then we can start to put in some of the veins using this nice dark color that I got on my brush. And then once we've done the dark veins and the shadowy bits, we can then um, come in with some light colors, maybe put some white. 
And if we want, we can put more darks in behind. You could you can play around with this for hours. And I would suggest you do more than one. It's like, um, uh, let's turn this around. I think that one might be a bit too dark. I'll just lift that up a bit. We could put um, spots on some of these leaves. Try and um, let's just paint some tiles on here. Right, I'm just going to get the hair dryer. So now I'm going to use this um, Artistro pen to put some lines in on some of the bits and pieces here to lift things up a little bit. Let's uh, put some vertical lines on this pot. do some circles on this one too. And we can put veins into the leaves using this. Is there any reason why a plant shouldn't have light and dark veins? I don't think so. Um, this hanging pot here, we're going to uh, Put it like in macrame. Or macram how do you pronounce that? I say macrame. Uh, okay, so how is that going to go? I'm not sure if that's going to show. I think I might have to do that in a dark color. Um, right. Okay, so that's that part done. Um, we could put in we, we could we could do lots of things actually, but do we actually want to do much more? That's a very good question. Perhaps this is enough to be going on with. Perhaps we should now start thinking about the framework for the for the greenhouse, which um, I think probably it needs to be done in a dark color. So for example, black. Um, so I've got a, this is a to <clears throat> Tombow brush pen here. I'm not sure whether that's going to be the best thing to use. Maybe I would be better off without the variation. Use this one, perhaps. This is just a pigment liner, uh, Stettler 0.8. And what we're probably going to have to do is use a ruler to do the side edges. So like, this is... I'm being very brave here, so we're going to go down the side here. I haven't done this before. And then on the same principle here. And we might want to make the lines thicker later. I'm do something like that. I'm just looking at my original version. 
Uh, so then we're going to come across the top like that and find the middle roughly. That's about here. So we're going to make a pointed roof. We have to go up like that. Doesn't have, doesn't have to be exact by any means. There we are, and we could imagine that it might have some kind of, uh, what do they normally put, some kind of, not a Christmas tree, but something on the top. I don't know what exactly. It's not meant to look like a Christmas tree. Um, and then we're going to divide it, let's do it the width of the ruler, so like that. And then something like that. And then we're going to go across here. And imagine, imagine that there is going to be a door. So, because this is a greenhouse, not miniature greenhouse. It's actually supposed to be, you know, big enough for people to go in. So that would then come right the way down to there like that. Similarly, this one. And then you could imagine that there might be a door. So we'll give it a door frame. And handle. Okay, and then, okay, so now we can put our strings in for our hanging plant. Like that. And I think we need a plant coming out of there, don't we? So maybe. Um, perhaps, perhaps this is where a few lines, perhaps we can have um, in the foreground here some, so that it kind of, shall I finish a sentence? Are you waiting for me to finish a sentence? Okay, we could do something like that. It looks like uh, uh, one of those, um, oh, I can't remember any words today. But I think it probably needs some leaves. Uh, That's better. There we are. Now, um, you could embellish the lines of the framework quite a lot. Um, one thing you could do is you could put in sort of corners and things, um, and you could make them much darker. And I'm just wondering whether to risk doing that with a paintbrush um, I think probably it would go very wonky, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure at all, but we probably could make it a bit darker, couldn't we? Uh, I don't know. I'm going to have to dry it, so I'll be back in a second. Okay, so what I've done now is I have gone over all the lines with a heavier pen to give myself some more structure. Um, you could embellish that however you wanted it, but then I thought, oh, well, maybe I need some flowers in there. So I made a photocopy and I thought I would try out the idea of adding some flowers using one of my Poetique pens 
because um, you don't want to go bonkers and and do something like this on your original in case you don't like what you did. So I thought I would try it out on here. So that's what I'm doing. And um, I think it's possible that a little bit of colour like that might be quite a good idea. And also um, the tone is wrong on this. This has gone very um, bluish. But if you wanted to, you could add more sort of leaves, use it, you know, sometimes these pens are really handy because you can just kind of brush in various colours in various places to sort of bring it to life a bit more. And this one needs more yellow, uh, whereas this one actually is already quite yellow. So I'm sort of leaning in the purple direction here and thinking it probably could do with some nice dark purpley shadows here and there. Um, and so, not sure if I've got a really dark purple pen. Let me have a look. Deep reddish purple, it might be a bit too red. Um, yeah, so well anyway, you could, you could bring in some purple shadows. Probably not a bad idea. Some of the lines, the veins could be added to using some purple. There, yeah, that just, it sort of optically makes a difference. In other words, it looks a bit different when it's got a little bit of purple in it. Even if you don't really see it as purple, you know. Uh, maybe here. Maybe down here behind, where it sort of goes behind. These are really useful for putting in um, fine lines, they really are. And if you feel like you want to add a whole purple branch leaf or whatever, you could do that. Lots of things you could do. You might not like everything you do. I think, though, it's probably true that a little bit of purple does lift the whole painting somewhat. Maybe on here, I'm not sure. So, there we are, another piece of paper completely ruined. As I said the other day, it's only a piece of paper. And it's Sunday today, so it's supposed to be a day off, isn't it? I hope everyone's having a nice weekend. Don't think I like that purple there, so I'm going to paint over that with green. Some people have been known to complain about Kuretake paints being opaque, but um, they must be people who never make mistakes and never have to cover them up. Because if you ever make a mistake in Kuretake world, it doesn't matter. Oh, I know, I know what I was going to do. I was going to put some... No, I wasn't, was I? I don't know, what was I gonna do? I think I need to go and have a nap. <laughs> Right, I'm going to leave that now before I make a mess of it. I don't know whether I ought to go around the pavement here. I don't know whether I should have made that bigger. I'm not sure. Well, I've never done anything quite like this before. So there we are. You are privy to my first experiment in painting a greenhouse. And um, I hope you enjoyed that. Give it a try. I'm sure yours will be much better than mine. And uh, I'll see you again soon. So bye, everybody. Bye for now. <laughs>